Hi, I'm Graham Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense. And today I'm going to explain how to make sure that a Java application is FIPS compliant. So what does being FIPS compliant mean? So FIPS, the Federal Information Processing Standards, are a bunch of standards maintained by NIST, a government body in the USA. And when people talk about this context of applications and computer code, mostly what they're talking about is the FIPS standard for encryption, for cryptography, which is the FIPS standard 140. Uh, this standard actually applies not to applications, but to cryptographic providers or cryptographic modules. So these could be software or hardware modules that do cryptography. And the standard specifies what kind of algorithms and key lengths these things can use. And they, each individual implementation needs to be improved by a FIPS testing lab to get this FIPS 140 certificate to say those algorithms really are implemented the right way inside that module. So when people talk about an application being FIPS compliant, what they actually mean most of the time is all of the cryptography that happens inside that application happens through a FIPS approved cryptographic module. Okay, so how do I figure out whether a Java application is using FIPS compliant cryptography? So if you wanna do FIPS compliant cryptography in a Java application purely in software right now, there's actually only one show in town, which is the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider. And this provider is an open source piece of code. You can download it and you can add that to your provider list uh, at the beginning of your Java code. So now that crypto cryptographic provider is available, but that's not enough for that application to be FIPS compliant because you need to make sure that every cryptographic operation that goes on is using the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider and not a different one, and that it's only doing FIPS compliant cryptography with that provider. So it's actually kind of complicated. So one way you might try and do this is say, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all of the other cryptographic providers in my application. I'm just gonna have the Bouncy Castle FIPS one, and then I can be sure that all my cryptography is happening through that provider because it's the only one in there. That's great, but if you do that with any big existing application, what you'll probably find is that your application stops working. So why does it stop working? It stops working because probably inside the application, there's some middleware or some open source library, some little components that you're using that call the cryptographic provider, but to do something that's maybe not that important for cryptographic security. So a, a good example would be, it might call a fast hash function um, that isn't considered secure anymore, so some, a function like MD5, which is, is not FIPS compliant, but it's not calling that for a cryptographic purpose, it's just calling that to make a hash for some identifier or whatever it is. Uh, it's not critical for security that that's a FIPS compliant function. And I still need to do that. So that means that my application is gonna to need to have a ordinary provider, should we say the normal software provider, and the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider uh, in order to function, otherwise everything is, is, is going to break. Okay, so I've got these different providers. Now I need to figure out where I'm calling which provider from all of my calls inside uh, the code. So that, that's quite a job. But it's actually a, even more complicated than that because the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider can work in two modes. It can work in approved only mode, which means that now if you want to do a function with that provider that's not in the FIPS set of algorithms, it will refuse. Or if you try and make a, a key that's too short for the FIPS requirements, it will refuse to do it. Or it can be uh, not in approved only mode, in which case you can access all the normal functions of Bouncy Castle, cryptography, you can do all sorts of, of different things. So if I want to prove my uh, application is FIPS compliant, it's not enough to show that it's just using the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider all the time. I need to show that it's using the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider in FIPS approved only mode for the critical pieces of cryptography that are actually protecting data. So how do you get the FIPS provider into FIPS only mode? Well, you set a global property, uh, that's fine, uh, but it's even more complicated than that because if you have set the global property to say use Bouncy Castle FIPS only in FIPS mode and then you create a new thread in the code, the new thread doesn't inherit that property. So your new thread will be running with Bouncy Castle in non-approved mode. So it could in fact be doing anything. So if you want to prove that your application is using Bouncy Castle FIPS provider in FIPS only mode for all of those operations, you actually need to check every single time you call 
the bouncy castle FIPS provider to be sure that it's in FIPS approved only mode when it's responding to that request in order to show to your auditor that your application really is only doing FIPS cryptography. This is a pretty complicated thing to do by hand. It's, it's not always possible to look at source code and know what provider is going to respond to a cryptographic request. It's a runtime property. It depends how things have been set up at runtime, how your particular Java environment is configured. Fortunately, CryptoSense has a tool that can do this. So the CryptoSense analyzer now has a rule which will check which provider was used for any cryptographic operation and whether the, if that was the Bounty Castle FIPS provider, whether it was in FIPS only mode at the moment that was called. So what can you do? You can put the CryptoSense tracer on your application, run it, look at the report in the analyzer, and you can see every single cryptographic operation that you did, which ones did and didn't use the Bouncy Castle FIPS provider, and which one used it in FIPS approved only mode. You can get your issues to export to your developers, get things fixed. And when you've got all of the critical operations covered with FIPS, you've got your artifact right there. You can show your auditor to prove that your Java application is in fact FIPS compliant. So if you want to see how it works, get in touch with you, the details below. We'll be very, very happy to give you a demo on that. Uh, until then, uh, happy FIPS compliance checking and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.